Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the Magoo Secant Wallace project that's going on nearby. So for starters, uh, the current project is going to take place on the coastal sides of PCH, where erosion has made the highway pretty unsteady as of the moment. It is going to be south of Point Magoo and Sycamore Canyon at mile markers 4 and 4.2. At mile marker four, the wall that they're going to construct is 600 feet, and at mile marker 4.2, the wall that they're going to construct is 200 feet. The project is projected to take uh, from fall 2021 to spring 2023, so it is almost complete, and it is also what many of us drove through when we were on our way to the field trip with the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy. Uh, so... Currently, who's cool with it? Uh, Caltrans is leading it. They're the ones who have brought in the construction workers, and then they're the ones who have submitted and gotten the permit approved to get the work started. And the California Coastal Commission was involved and had to approve the project. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail soon as to why the Coastal Commission had to get involved. However, just based off this photo, you guys can probably guess. So it's going to cost $51 million. Uh, however, it's also going to have the economic costs of increased traffic. And while it is only 1,000 feet of PCH that's getting shut down, they're bringing it down to be one lane only with no shoulder access and at 25 miles per hour speed limit. So it's uh, not much space that they're shutting down, but it will have a definite effect as we all felt on that field trip. So the reason this is happening, PCH is considered one of the most vulnerable highways in Southern California. Surf and storm erosion on these coastal slopes of PCH has made the road shoulder itself crack and displace and just be in general uneven and fairly unsafe. Uh, so Hurricane Marie was cited as one of the major reasons that PCH has been damaged in this way. Um, and concerns of accessibility and emergency exits have been concerned are around because they're concerned about this being blocked by a degrading road. So Hurricane Marie, what was going on with her? Hurricane Marie was off Mexico's coast and it caused dangerous swells, 12 to 14 feet waves. Uh, homes were flooded, cliffs were eroded, two piers on Catalina were destroyed, and it was a kickstarter for a lot of coastal emergency development permits right around PCH. So even though this took place all the way back in 2015, we are still feeling those effects now. So what exactly are they going to do to fix this problem? This isn't the first thing that they have tried, these secant walls. Secant means support also, oh well. Uh, so previously, they have tried to reconstruct the slope with vegetation. They've tried to put in three and four ton rock slope protection. They've tried to just pile dirt on it to try and keep the road stable. But the continued instability of all of this previous solutions has led to them having to close down the beach below PCH because of concerns of rock falls and other just catastrophes. Uh, so what they're planning on doing now is putting structural beams and inserted into holes and filling it with concrete. This is known as the cast and drill holes piles technique, and it prevents the need for fully excavating the slope, which would increase both cost and time needed to get the project done. They're also planning on doing some rock scaling of the cliff side. They're just going to remove loose rocks and add some steel mesh to the slope so that future loose rocks have nowhere to go. Will it work? Uh, Caltrans projects it lasting 75 years in a medium risk aversion projection. Uh, in the meantime, they're going to work on an even longer term solution and they're hoping to replace us with another better solution in 2051. So while it's projected to last 75 years, they really wanna get it out of here within the next 30. Is this a win? Uh, Sort of, mostly. The Coastal Act did have a few policy issues that could come up during the uh, process of this project. There's some concern about the shoreline protection devices being used. Are these the most sustainable options we have available? Uh, even though we're trying to support a road, is there anything better that we can think of? There's also concerns of public access because by having to shut down and rebuild, there's going to be both 
uh, in the short term, uh, heart difficulties accessing the beach while they're working on it. But also, while they're making these, they're going to have to take away a few parking spots from the Point Magoo State Park parking lot, which does decrease accessibility. So that's a major concern for the Coastal Act. They're also worried about sensitive environments and habitats that might be present in the area while it is only a thousand feet stretch of road. There are some concerns about what's present. Uh, there's also some of the portions that these secant walls will be built on are on state tide lands. And state tide lands are supposed to be public access, of course. Uh, this means that they have been landed into the California Coastal Commission jurisdiction, and this whole project has to be carried out while adhering to Chapter 3 of the Coastal Act. So there's going to be a few rules before we can move forward. Special conditions that the California Coastal Commission has set in place. The current revetment, the revetment is this wall that they've placed at the base currently, at the base of the cliffside. Uh, and they're thinking that in order to build these secant walls, the current revetment, which is our temporary fix right now, that has to be removed within one year of finishing the secant walls. Caltrans also has to assume all liability for whatever fallout might occur from this decision. They have to find a long-term solution by 2051. That's what I mentioned earlier. These secant walls aren't ideal, so we're going to try and replace those. They also need to submit a climate resiliency and highway safety corridor plan within five years. Uh, so this is to try an overall arching plan to figure out what they can do to stop this problem at the source. So rather than try and uh, fight off erosion just as it happens and keep building these walls, they want to plan to stop erosion entirely or figure out what to do with where the highway goes. They also need to put up their signs uh, where they protect coastal resources. They can't just drop a sign wherever. Uh, the shoulders of the road in these tight curves, they have to be at least two feet wide. Um, Off-site public access improvements just in general for coastal services, those need to be improved as well. They also need to submit a construction, construction plan before beginning construction for the California Coastal Commission to look over and approve. And they need to do biological surveys prior to construction and monitoring throughout. The habitat uh, that they may or may not be disturbing, they don't believe there's anything super endangered in the area. They don't believe that they're going to run into any condors or anything. But just in case, they need to be surveyed and monitored the entire time. So for real, is this a win? Yeah, mostly. Safety-wise, very much needed. You guys have driven down PCH. You've seen what those cliff sides look like. You need to keep that road safe. Uh, Caltrans and the California Coastal Commission will be collaborating the entire time to ensure the safety of the resources, environmental presence, and public access. Overall, it's a pretty big win and not much controversy is involved in the decision. Uh, and here are my citations.